Good, because we have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. I apologize in advance because we will probably be interrupted several times. Like I said, we're expecting four or five more people. Um, but what we're here for tonight, and there's the first one. <laughs> we're here to learn about reading and understanding food labels. Now, there is so much content in this simple PowerPoint that if you want more information, notice you don't have um, clipboards and paper and pen this time. There's just too much to write. You just nonstop be writing. If you would like the PowerPoints, you can either sign up with Val at the end, or if you go to our website and contact us via email, then you can send us an email that way and we'll email them to you. It's going to be so much easier for you just to listen and absorb it tonight if you can. And then, like I said, peruse the PowerPoints later on if you'd like. Is that cool, everybody? Okay, so let me introduce myself. I think I've met everybody, but I'm Dr. Molstry. Um, please understand that when we're talking about food labels, this is, again, one slice of the pie. Many of you have been here for organic talks or nutrition talks um, or a myriad of other talks. This is one slice of the pie. It doesn't matter what you put into your body if your nervous system doesn't work well. So remember, your priority should always be your brain and your nervous system. If the nerves that tell your stomach how to digest food don't work properly, it doesn't matter what you put in. So first and foremost, nervous system. But again, tonight, it's about learning and understanding labels. So without further ado, let's dig in. This is what we're going to be learning tonight. What food labels do tell you and what they don't tell you. We're going to talk about things you need to be looking for foods that you should buy and foods you should not buy. You guys have seen labels like this before, right? Lots and lots and lots of times, but you've probably never really understood what's in it or how important it is for you. We're going to be talking about what really is in your food tonight. But first, let's review our FDA food pyramid. How many of you have seen this before? Good. So according to the Food and Drug Administration, the most important food group is what? Carbs. Yeah, carbs, basically. It's your breads, your grains, your rice, your pasta. Um, second, of course, then would be vegetables and fruits, and then followed by milk, yogurt, cheese group, and then the meat group. And last but not least, fats, oils, and sweets, everybody's favorites. <laughs> Let's look at the real pyramid. It should look like basically the exact opposite. So you can't read it. That was my point. The very bottom should be the most important part, and that's going to be your fruits and your vegetables. How many of you get seven fruits and seven vegetables every day? It seems unrealistic, doesn't it? But the way that our food is produced these days, you need a minimum of seven. Thirteen if you're more active. So seven to thirteen fruits and seven to thirteen vegetables. Next in the group should be your um, meats, protein. The average person needs three servings. One serving size would be the size of your palm. And an active person, four, maybe more. But we'll talk about those again in detail. Next on your group, and notice the last three groups should all be used sparingly. So your breads, rice, pasta, cereals, you should use those sparingly. Same with milk, yogurt, cheese, etc., especially if they're pasteurized. And then fats, oils, and sweets is a no-brainer. The less of that you consume, the healthier you are. So what does the food label tell us? Well, gosh, it tells us a ton. And that's what we're going to go through. We're going to break down this entire label step by step. There are five different components that we're going to go through. So first and foremost, let's look at the top of the nutrition label. When we look at the serving sizes, very important that you take note of that. How many servings are there in this container? And by the way, this is macaroni and cheese. How many servings in this box? <laughs> Two. Yeah. So that's going to come into play because in a moment we're going to talk about how many calories and whatnot in servings. So that is the most overlooked thing that you will ever see on a label. Sometimes you look at M&Ms, and I'm not familiar with, with what the actual label says, but it could say four servings. They minimize the serving size to make it look like, oh, these aren't so bad. If you don't look closely, you realize, holy cow, there's 73 servings in this little box of M&Ms. So that's what this is pointing out. Your calories, in this case, again, it's macaroni and cheese. One serving has 250 calories. You'll look a little bit further to the right, and it's pointing how many of those calories come from fat. Almost half come from fat. Automatically, you would rule this out as a 
healthy. <laughs> exactly. This is a this is a, a poor food choice. Now that percent daily value on the right hand side, right there, comes into play here. Now these are food items that you don't want, or nutrients that generally speaking Americans have more than enough. Too many. So we look at total fat. And that's 12 grams when you broke it down into different components. Saturated fat has three grams, trans fats 1.5. That's not as important as this number right there. That 18% tells us this. If you look at a range of zero to 5%, that means it is a good source of, a poor source of these nutrients, and that is good in this situation. We don't want a lot of fat. If it's 10 to 20, that's a good source. 20 and more is high. So I'm going to repeat that. Five or less is a low source of that particular food item. 10 to 20 is a good source. 20 or more is high. So do we want high fat or low fat? Low fat. Right. So we want to see 5% or less, don't we? And this is 18. You say that's good or high. It falls within that good category, but it's interpretation. So this is really pretty high. Now, if you have two, if you have the whole box, all of a sudden you've jumped up to 36% of your entire daily consumption of fat. Does that put it into perspective? Okay, we look at cholesterol. If you have one serving size, it's 10%. Good, bad? It's okay, right? Not as good as if it were five or less, but it's not bad. Sodium, very high. Total carbohydrates, again, it's okay. It's not fantastic, it's not horrible. Everybody following me so far? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so the what's the recommended sodium like per person recommended? We'll actually oh, we'll get, get there. Right? Get, um, get enough of these nutrients. These are mostly your vitamins and minerals and things that you need to have. So in this case, now we're looking at that same scale. Five percent or less is now bad because you want a lot of this. Ten to twenty is okay. It's a good source. Twenty or more is, is fantastic. It's high in that nutrient. So we look at vitamin A, is it good or bad? Bad. Yeah, it's not bad, but we want way more, right? Mm -hmm. Vitamin C, mm -hmm. bad. Calcium, mm -hmm. it's a great source of calcium, isn't it? It's 20%, we want 20% or higher, ideally. Iron, again, is pretty low. Um, sorry, I skipped up here. Fiber, is a good thing or a bad thing? Mm -hmm. Fiber's good. The more fiber we have in a food item is better. Or it is better. Sugars, of course, not so good. Protein, again, it's indifferent. Notice they don't rate those. There's zero percent protein in this. There's no protein in this food. Can you see what that's? Mm -hmm. Sorry. The very bottom is the footnote. Can everybody see this okay? It's a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at here is this is based on a typical American diet. So the FDA recommends the average person be consume between 2,000 and 2,500 calories a day. This is stating that in 60, or I'm sorry, in a 2,000 calorie diet, you need to have less than 65 grams of total fat. So all of this up here, you can use this scale down here to determine, okay, where do I stand? So let's do just that. Um, your fat. If you want to have less than 65 grams of fat, and this is 12 grams, but we had the whole box, so two servings, so now we've got 24. How are we doing for the rest of our day? <laughs> Not, good. Not so good, right? You look at cholesterol. You want to have less than 300 milligrams. How do we do up here? The whole box again, we had 60. We have plenty of room. We're not doing too bad, right? Sodium, Amy. 2,400 milligrams is FDA's recommendation, less than 2,400. The less you have, the better. Um, and again, so that's what this footnote is all about. It's trying to help you gauge where you stand throughout your day. Questions on this part? Go ahead. Are those numbers based on their 